What is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation homebrew news and much, much more. So what you see on the screen in front of you right now is Elf TKGI running on the PlayStation 4. And yes, this is quite an amazing thing because a lot of you might be familiar with PKGI, which is on the PlayStation 3. Now, there's a few differences that I want to talk about with FPKGI, which is for fake package, versus the original version that came out for the PlayStation 3. So in this video today, I'm going to show you everything that you need to get started and setting up your own FPKGI for the PlayStation 4. Let's just go ahead and jump straight into it. So let's take a look at the official GitHub repo. So this has been created by somebody called It's Joker ZZ. And what they say is, is that this is FPKGI. It is an open source app for downloading and installing PS4 PKG files from a server. It is a clone of PKGI. It supports custom content via a JSON file and is ideal for game preservation and personal use. Now, over here is a bit more information that is in the README here, and it basically says that, again, that this is a clone of the original PKGI, and obviously this right here was a package for the PlayStation 3, which was extremely popular. And what it states here is, is that it supports any PKG content, again, provided you have the necessary license, and it is open source and community driven. Now, in order to get started using this, jump over to the releases here, and then just grab the very latest Notly build PKG. Go ahead and copy that over to your PlayStation 4, and then from there, go ahead and install it. Once you're complete, meet me back in the video. Okay, so at this point, you should have went ahead and installed FPKGI for your PlayStation 4 and ran it at least once. Now what we need to do is we need to access some of the files on the system that was detailed inside the readme for the GitHub page. Again, I'm going to show you exactly where those files are and what they do. So I already have PS4 Explorer 2.0 installed. Obviously, you can use FTP. Might be a little bit easier to manage that than this, but just let me show you a few files up front. So upon first launch, if you go to your data folder, there is a folder now that's called F. PKGI. Now, by default, it should have went ahead and generated all this for you. Now, the only thing that you are going to need to edit is going to be inside of content JSONs. So, by default, there is one created for apps, demos, DLC, games, and much, much more. Now, you are the one that has to provide the information in this versus the PS3 version, which was downloading all those directly from Sony's servers. We can't do that with the PlayStation 4, so you will need to provide all the PKGs yourself. Now, let's jump over to the computer where I can show you this a little bit more easily. Okay, so over on the computer, I simply FTP'd to my PlayStation 4, and once I did, I found it a little bit easier to work with those JSON files. So if you go to your PlayStation 4 and you connect and go to data, and then FPKGI, right there is the content JSONs that we just looked at just a second ago. And so right now, my workflow has been kind of copying those over into a working directory over on my computer and then using something like Visual Studio Code to edit them. And then once the edit is complete, I just simply upload it. So let's look at the games.json now. OK, so here is exactly what the JSON looks like, at least for two of my games. 
Now do keep in mind in here, I reused a cover URL just because I didn't want to spend any more time looking for it. But the structure goes just like this. So here is my games.json. So I have at the top level, it says data. And then I need to provide a URL to where exactly this PKG sits. So right now, I just have a little Python server running. It's just sitting there on port 8000, just serving up files. And so I just put a couple of PKGs that I had already downloaded. So this one, which was 8-bit invaders. And then I downloaded Minecraft and just put Minecraft on the same server right here. So some of the information that you should fill out is the title ID and obviously use the correct one. I just left the default in for a bunch of these values. For the name, I did provide the correct name. And then this is a cover URL. And then here is my entry for Minecraft. So again, if you do want to add more of these games, you would just simply copy this block out here. So I will leave my sample because this works 100% into the description below so that you can just copy and paste out a working sample with at least two entries as you go ahead and build your JSON files out. Again, that one was just for the games, but you can include Homebrew here. You can even include updates. So you could put a 9.00 update on there if you wanted to, to some demos and then just apps. Okay, let's switch back again to our PlayStation 4 and let's take a look at this brand new configuration file that I just edited in Visual Studio Code that I just copied back over to my PlayStation 4. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and launch mine again. If you already had yours loaded, there is a way to refresh it. And you can do that by pressing the triangle here for menu. And then just come in right down here to reload JSON files. Okay, so right there they are. They are listed in games. And again, you can use the R1 and the L1 button to toggle between all the different content. Right now I don't have anything loaded except for a few of these games. And so if I go to 8-Bit Invaders, just like I was able to on the PlayStation 3, and I press the square button to get some details, there we go. Right there I can see that it pulled down my image that I had included in the JSON. Now, if I go back up to this one right here, for example, which is Minecraft, now I can go ahead and start downloading it. So again, this is downloading it directly off of my server. So that is very cool. So let's go ahead and let's let this finish up downloading and I'll show you what the rest of the experience is. Okay, and so it looks like it just finished up downloading. So now that it downloaded, we are just going to go to our main menu here. And that is uh, pretty awesome because right there is Minecraft. And not only was it downloaded, but it was also installed, which is absolutely fantastic. And I did all of this through this brand new tool that was created called FPKGI. That is pretty amazing. So anyways, I just wanted to provide this kind of quick video of how you could do something like this on your own. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Michael, out!